that you thought maybe your reporting was even a little bit easy on punk. And I kind of wondered if that was in your mind as you were writing this last story in, in what I don't believe will be the last story about him, obviously. But uh, did, was that in your mind as you were writing it was sort of if you were no. being nice to him or, or not in the reporting? No, no, it's just writing. Uh, I, I was just writing. I was trying to write a fair story, which, you know, whenever you write a fair story, uh, both sides get mad at you. Yeah. In, That's in when you know it's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't hear anyone getting mad at me, but I'm sure people did, you know, but it's not, it's of no concern to me at all, but no, I didn't think about that for a second, really. So this latest uh, story on CM Punk, I think the thing that stood out that we hadn't heard prior was that maybe the the Young Bucks kind of had a little bit of an internal clock as to when they would have been maybe comfortable having the discussion that CM Punk seemingly wanted to have. And, you know, just the idea of, you know, we got to let, let's just let things settle down for a bit. And that's at some point we'll be able to sit down and chat. And then they, it just never happened. Yeah. I mean, I said from day one, time heals all wounds. And, and how many times have I talked to you and other people about it? Like every time something goes Something went like this. It was kind of like, well, they just kicked, they extended the clock again. Yeah, reset it. Reset. They the reset clock. the clock at zero. You know, every every couple of weeks they reset the clock at zero. If nothing would have happened, and everyone would have, um, you know, I mean, everything would have gone smoothly. Um, I'm sure that at in some point everybody would have worked together. You know, if there were apologies and all that, but um, didn't happen. Um, other things kept happening, and and uh, you know. It was, it was inevitable. You know, it was even if it was one thing, you know, it was just one thing over like the last couple months, it probably wouldn't have been so bad, but you know, when it comes, when there's stuff every couple weeks, if not every week, I mean, every couple weeks that you would hear something and I, I can't even say that I would hear something every week, but you know, I mean, and you know, it or almost every week, but you know, it's just, and, and, you know, you're going in with, um, the, the the thing that needed the things that need to be worked out weren't it's a broken record it goes back like we said to probably february march of of 2022 and and uh you know it festered you know and it's not the first time that's happened in wrestling and it's not the last time it'll happen in wrestling it's the stuff like this has happened in wwe too not you know so um but it did and and uh yeah it's not a you know Punk will be around wrestling. He, you know, he'll he's going to do a podcast, or I don't say he's going to do a podcast, but he'll do podcast interviews or something at some point, probably sooner than later. You know, with his side, and you know, some every promoter but AEW is probably going to want him if he'll work for them. I don't know about WWE; that might be the exception. You know, so it's the ball's in his court. If he wants to wrestle, he'll have plenty of opportunities to wrestle. If nobody, you know, if he wants to wrestle and make a certain amount of money. Um, you know, WWE may be the only place to do that. Uh, but, but who knows, you know, maybe, maybe the, the Aspers will kick in a lot of money thinking that CM Punk will lead them to the promised land and, and he can get a great deal at impact or maybe, I don't know, new Japan, you know, and I don't know if he wants to do new Japan. I don't know that it, it, new Japan's a good fit for him. Um, at first it would be, um, long-term, I don't know, but, um, you know, just from the injury situation and everything, but, um, if it was a couple of years ago, uh, New Japan would have paid a great, great deal of money for him. Um, that would have been worth it. But, um, you know, their finances are in a different place because of the pandemic. They haven't fully recovered from it. So I don't know. They still might, but I don't know it as, as much as if it was 2018 and this was happening, uh, he, he'd get a great offer from, from mm -hmm. New Japan. But, you know, now he still may. I don't know. The uh, one of the, the folks watching Braden mentioned that it would be kind of ironic for him to tell his story on a podcast 10 years after he, he was on Colt's podcast, which kind of created, you know, the, the big storm that it did. Do you expect. Like he, you mentioned his side, obviously, there is stuff that he's going to say that he hasn't said or, or um, but I'm sure a lot of it. Has oh, I'm, sure been reported. I'm sure the, I'm sure there will be a ton. You know, I mean, it's just obvious. Yeah. Do you, but do you know what he can say versus what he can't say from previous? I, 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 you mean from, from legal stuff? Yeah. yeah I, mean, I don't know all the details of the legal stuff. Um, 
you know, who he's not, you know. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And then when asked at the press conference about what he could do in the future, Tony did not say. So, I mean, it's essentially all speculation from here on out about where he does go and when he can go. But I, I was thinking, you know, because when we were talking on Sunday, when we were watching All Out, I, I sense, uh, you know, I, I sort of understood, yeah, you know, there could be some negativity on the WWE side, and I'm sure there is. And I, it- I, I, I can I can tell you that there's people who are positive and people who are negative, and it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's talent wise, but as far as that goes, at the end of the day, it's it's going to be, you know, depending on when it comes up. And if Vince is back, it would be Vince's decision. If not, it's going to be Nick Khan and and uh, Paul Avex. And I don't know, you know, what they think. You know, I mean, it's it's funny. I've read so much stuff, and it's kind of like. One of those things again, where um, I, I don't think people understand um, pro wrestling economics. Well, I mean, I'm sure there are people who do, but but it's like the whole thing of um, like, uh, oh, you know, like Endeavor, uh, you know, whatever. And this is not an Endeavor deal, you know what I mean? It's it's going to be a WWE deal. Area Manual, he might he might go and say something to them, like, hey, is this guy available? Maybe we should try to use him. But ultimately, you know, this is absolutely one of those things that would be Vince's call. And the idea of, you know, budgets and things like that, it's like, if he's going to go there, okay, if, if, you know, and and how much it would cost to get him, let's just say, if he's going to go there, the amount they offer him, and they know their business, will be far less than the income that they believe he will generate. If they, if they believe if they believe that 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 uh, he will generate seven million dollars a year for the company, uh, they will offer him five million dollars or four million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. They're not going to offer him money that will cost them money. So whatever they offer him would be a profit margin for them, based on the idea that he is a draw and that he will sell merchandise, which he will. Um, that he will. His s- AEW shirt it was still number one the last time I saw of the last mm-hmm. numbers. Um, he was, yeah, yeah, he was, and he was always in the top tier when it came to merchandise. He was there, the a big merchandise guy and he'll be even bigger in WWE. WWE's got, you know, um, and, and, you know, WWE, you know, except he'll, he'll be accepted back by the WWE fan base. You know, I mean, we, we saw with Cody, you know what I mean? It's like Cody was getting mixed reactions. Everyone's like, oh, he's, all the WWE fans are going to boo him because he left and all that. And it doesn't happen that way. When you come to a new place, you're, you're, it's a fresh coat of paint and those fans are going to love you. If, if a heel from WWE, let's say, um, um, geez, I don't know, um, would be a, a top, not Roman because he's always gets cheered anyway, but, uh, Jimmy Uso, uh, you know, who's a heel right now. Right. I mean, it's not like he's going to go, he shows up on AEW TV Wednesday, the place goes bonkers for him. Yeah. That's just, that's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.